You know, there are some days when a cup of coffee goes well in the woods. Actually, I guess every day you're in the woods, a cup of coffee goes well. Sometimes it's just so you can sit on the shore and look at the lake and ponder life. Sometimes you want a coffee because you really need one. This is one of those days. It's been about five and a half hours since I entered the woods, and it was much later than I expected to sit down and have my lunch. Woo! There I am. Smoke found me as usual. So I've had some lunch. Good lunch. I'm enjoying the solitude here. I've got a, quite a hike out yet, but I'm not going anywhere until I have a good cup of coffee. All right, so let's pick up where we left off in our last episode. Welcome to episode two of Coffee in the Woods. Today it's all about bush coffee. Sometimes referred to as cowboy coffee, but uh, since we are bushcrafters, it's bush coffee. Uh, before I begin, though, I just want to recap what we did in lesson one. All right, lesson one, episode one. We talked about using instant coffee, and I showed you some examples of instant coffee. Uh, ones I carry most often are known as the Via uh, instant coffees, and you can get them in different flavors and even get them in ones like this pumpkin spice latte. Pretty good stuff. Uh, but I wanted to talk about an alternative to buying those little prepackaged instant coffees, which is to buy uh, some instant coffee in a jar. Uh, I happened to have uh, been in an Italian store in Halifax, and I picked up some instant espresso coffee. Actually, it tastes really good. Some of the best instant coffee I've ever had. And what I did with it is I just, uh, I had been in the dollar store, and in the dollar store, in the craft section, I found these little tiny Ziploc bags. And, uh, yeah, that's all I had to do. A tablespoon and a half of instant coffee in one of those little Ziploc bags, and I've got my own little uh, tiny pre-made uh, instant coffee. A lot cheaper. So, that, you know, that's an alternative, something you might want to think of. But not today's subject. Okay, bush coffee. There are as, probably as many recipes for bush coffee as there are bush crafters. I'm going to share with you three ways of making bush coffee, and then I'll share with you my favorite way, and that's what we're going to do today. So one way of making bush coffee is not a lot different than what we did last time. That is to bring your water to a boil, take it off boil, Measure out the amount of coffee, uh, ground coffee that you want, put it in the water, stir it in, cover it, and let it set for about four minutes. And then you can use one of the methods I'll talk about in a minute to settle the grounds down or to filter the grounds out, and your coffee's ready. Uh, the idea there is that the coffee, the water, it just comes off a of boil at, what, 212 Fahrenheit? But pretty quickly it settles down to 200 Fahrenheit, which is both the ideal temperature for coffee, according to some coffee experts. Um, it's good. It's not a lot different than what we did last week, where we just put the coffee in the filter and right in the cup and then poured the water through and let it set. It's just that you're doing it right in the pot and then filtering it. Really no different. Another method is one that is uh, what Morris Kohansky teaches in his videos. And this is his idea of bush coffee. And I've tried it, and it does work. It's not my favorite way, but I'll share it with you. Basically, the idea is that you'll take cold water in your pot, and you'll measure out the amount of coffee that you want to have, and you put it on the cold water. And I say on, not in. You don't stir it in. You let it ride on top of the cold water, and it will float. Then you put it on the fire, and you slowly bring it to a boil. You never stir it. You have to watch it closely, and I'll explain why in a minute. But once it comes to a boil, the boiling action of the rolling of the water will actually mix the coffee through. Once it comes to a boil, you begin timing it for one minute. And Morris Gansky is very specific about that. One minute, no more. And after one minute is up, you take it off of the fire, let it cover it, and let it set for three or four minutes, and you're ready to go. Well, I've tried that, and that works pretty good. But uh, the way that I enjoy making bush coffee the most is a little different, and it seems to be counterintuitive to what a good cup of coffee would be, but it works. And that is for me, when the water is warm, not necessarily boiling, but when the water is warm, I'll mix my coffee in, and I'll bring it to a boil, and I'll boil it for three minutes, maybe four minutes at the most. I'll take it off, let it settle down, use one of the methods I'll describe shortly to bring the grounds to the bottom of the pot. And for whatever reason, that three or four minutes of boiling uh, does something to the coffee chemically that makes it a lot smoother. And I, I hadn't, wouldn't have believed it's true, but uh, it's the one I would recommend you try. So, word of 
caution. Let's talk about how much water you should have in the pot. Now I have to get the cover off the pot and I'll show you. All right, so you can see my water is hot and I've got the pot about half full. That's all you ever want to do is fill your pot half full. And the reason is, when you put the coffee grounds in and it comes to boil, it will start to roll and froth and quickly climb the side of your pot. And if you're not careful, you're going to be putting your fire out with your coffee. So it's a lose-lose, if you will. So never more than half the pot full of water. And then we'll add the coffee to that, and we'll bring it to a boil, and we'll monitor it closely so it doesn't overboil. If it looks like it's going to, I'll lift the pot off of the fire just so it doesn't. A simmer is probably a, a more of an accurate way rather than boil for three to four minutes, but a, a hard simmer. So I'm going to bring this to a boil. I'm going to throw my coffee in now. I'm going to bring this to a boil. And when it comes, when it does so, I'll, uh, I'll bring it back so you can see what's happening. I don't know if you can see it through the steam, but uh, that's exactly what I was talking about. Turn my head for a minute, and the water came to a boil with the coffee, and it climbed right up to the side of the pot, and you can see the grounds all over the inside of the pot there. That's why you have to be paying attention the whole way, whole time. So my wa coffee is into about two minutes of uh, a light, gentle boil, as you can see. Another minute or so, I'll take it off, and I'll be ready to filter it out. Finally, my coffee's ready. So it came to a gentle boil. Let it go three, four minutes on that gentle boil. Took it off. It's been sitting for about a minute. Now, there's a couple tricks for getting the grounds to settle to the bottom so you don't have so much... Uh, grounds in your cup of coffee, uh, so you're not uh, chewing them, spitting them out as you drink your coffee. You want to drink it and enjoy it, not chew it and spit it out. So one method, one of the traditional methods, is to take a stick and just gently tap the side of the the pot that you're using, and that does help. Another method is to take some cold water and pour some cold water into the into the top of the coffee, and that will grab onto the grounds and help settle the grounds to the bottom. Um, I'm not liking that one so much because it cools my coffee off a bit too much. Uh, the third one is, and that's the one I use, to be quite honest, it's just the simplest one, is to pour it through a filter. And that's what I'm going to do now. I've got a little stainless steel filter that I carry with me sometimes, and that's what I'm going to use. Um, by the way, I didn't mention earlier when I said only fill your pot half full of water when you're making your coffee so that you don't get the boil over effect. What you can do, though, if you're looking for more coffee than that in your pot is, you're better off making the coffee strong. In other words, add extra coffee to the amount of water, more than you would normally. Make your coffee, then you can always add water to that and increase the volume. It's a lot easier to do that than try to deal with the mess of the coffee boiling over and onto your fire. All right, so I'm going to pour the coffee through my filter. I'm going to enjoy a beautiful cup of coffee. Yeah, it must have did a pretty good job. Most of it is still in the pot with the coffee. That's the way you want to see it. Okay. There it is. Another cup of coffee made in the woods. So if you're enjoying this series on coffee in the woods and you want to see more, uh, then please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and leave comments below. Stay tuned for another episode of Coffee in the Woods. See you soon.